Hello everyone, welcome to the channel on part 4 of Making Marseille Great Again in the FM24 Early Access release. Or at least trying to anyway. We have made it to the midpoint of Season 1, we are on New Year's Eve, and here is how the season has gone so far. After a last gasp, heartbreaking defeat against Real Madrid in our opening Champions League group game and getting absolutely outplayed by PSG in the last part of this series, we went on a run of 10 games unbeaten in all competition, starting with a 1-1 draw against Monaco and ending with a 1-1 draw against Strasbourg. In between that, we beat Young Boys twice and drew with Feyenoord in our other Champions League group games, so we were still in contention at the top of the French League table and we were still in with a chance of making the knockout stages of the Champions League. But then we went to Real Madrid. We knew it was going to be tough, but we'd already given Real Madrid a tough encounter at home. All we had to do was repeat that performance and hopefully hold on to get something out of this game. We knew it was going to be tough, but we had a chance. We looked to build from the back early on. 13 and a half minutes gone. Renan Lodi to Lamar. Lamar gives the ball away to Valverde. Rodrigo picks it up. The defence, just tackle him. Nobody goes in for the tackle. And he basically walked through our defence like a knife through butter. And we were 1-0 down. We were looking at trying to build an attack. And Rodrigo just picks the ball up. Says, see you later. Two, four, six of them couldn't get anywhere near him. And it was 1-0. And it was going to be a long night. Camavinga. Picks the ball up, shoots, scores. It's 2-0, Eduardo Camavinga. We get to half-time, 2-0 down. Hadn't had a shot on goal. And Real Madrid were all over us. Vinicius Jr. hitting the woodwork just after the restart. And it wasn't looking good. But we had a chance. Aubameyang, Kondogbia, Klaus... We were mounting an attack, but then Klaus gives the ball away to Vinicius Jr. And Real Madrid are going to come away with it. Vinicius Jr. finds Mendy on the left. Mendy to Joselu, back to Mendy. They're just playing with us now. Mendy crosses it to Bellingham. Bellingham's header, it's hit the post. Rodrigo puts it in, it's 3-0. But wait, it's not 3-0. Because it was offside. VAR gets involved. And disallows the goal. It remains Real Madrid 2, Marseille nil. But Bellingham's corner is headed out. Josselu back to Bellingham. Bellingham to Alaba. They're just too good. Bellingham shoots, scores. And there is the third goal. Real Madrid 3, Marseille nil, And our Champions League hopes were hanging by a thread. We bounced back from that Real Madrid defeat with a 5-0 victory over Rennes. And then we went to mid-table Lorient and things went a little bit wrong. We went 1-0 down after 13 minutes. A Jordan Veritu penalty brought us back into the game four minutes later. But then the second half was an absolute nightmare. Thomas Lamar went down injured with nobody around him on the 53rd minute. And is out of action for a few weeks with a sprained ankle. And then a Malang Sar own goal in the 75th minute gave Lorient the victory. It wasn't ideal preparation going into a crucial game against Feyenoord. And now we would have to do it without one of our best players. So now it was win or bust against Feyenoord. Win, we would be through to the Champions League knockout stages. Lose, and we would have to settle for the Europa League. Draw, and it was the Europa League as well because... We went into this final game in third place in the Champions League Group H. Real Madrid had already qualified. And because Feyenoord beat Real Madrid 3-1 in their home encounter, we went in a point behind Feyenoord and knowing that only a win would do. Feyenoord, the away team, started on the front foot and could have got off to the perfect start. But Jimenez's shot was just saved by Paul Lopez and tipped over the bar. Conje again gives the ball away. Ivanusec shoots, scores, top corner, and we now have a mountain to climb. 
Feyenoord have taken the lead with a fantastic shot and we are 1-0 down. We're going to demand more straight from the off. We're 37 minutes into this game. 37 and a half minutes into this game. We're 1-0 down. We don't have long. Poor, poor passing. We need to be better. And now, we're approaching half-time. Murillo gets the ball. Kondogbia. Back to Ronjay. Ronjay shoots. It's deflected and it's in. It's been given as an own goal, but it's Marseille 1, Feyenoord 1. And it doesn't matter how it happens as long as it ends up in the back of the net. Murillo's ball to Kondogbia. Kondogbia finds Ronjay. Ronjay's shot is awful and it's deflected in, but it's one all. And somehow, without even having a shot on target, we've made it to half-time level. Second half, I've demanded more again. I've given a rollicking in the dressing room at half time. Now, Abamyang, Harrit, Lodi, Abamyang scores. Boom! It's 2 1. And we're in the lead. And we're heading to the Champions League knockout stages. VAR are checking, but the goal is given. Abamyang. Harrit, Harrit to Lodi, Lodi into Abamyang, and Abamyang at an acute angle has found the back of the net. But Feyenoord are not going to lie down and die. Timber's shot goes wide. But they're coming at us again. Jimenez, Ivanusec, he's through, he shoots, he scores, it's 2 2. And the referee's got his finger to his ear. He's checking, VAR are checking, and the goal has been disallowed. We stay in the lead. Jimenez got the ball. He just held off just a little bit too long on his pass. Ivan Usec was offside. He shoots and scores, but it's disallowed. But Feyenoord are all over us. He shoots. Lopez clutches it gratefully to his chest. A long kick. And it's straight back at us. Feyenoord were all over us. They just wouldn't lay down. Lopez made the brilliant save there from Jimenez, though, to keep it Marseille 2, Feyenoord 1. And now we're approaching the dying stages. All we've got to do is hold on to the ball. But we can't. <laughs> Aubameyang gives it away. And Feyenoord are not panicking. They're not going long. They're going to keep trying to play this great football they've been playing. And it's a great save from Paolo Lopez to keep us in the lead. And Aubameyang now, all he's got to do is go run the clock down. But he can't keep possession. We can't keep possession. And now Harrit to Murillo. Back to Saar. That's it. Just play around with the ball. It's the 87th minute. We've got three minutes to go. To guarantee our place in the Champions League knockout stages. All we've got to do is pass the ball around. Harrit's clear. Shoot. Shoot. He doesn't shoot. Murillo. He does shoot. But it's saved and it's over for a corner. At this stage, I've put on to waste time. So Renan Lodi knows that he can take as much time as he possibly wants here. Like, <laughs> take, take as much time as you can. Run that clock down. And see us into the knockout stages. And that's what he did. And then plays one of the worst corners I've ever seen. <laughs> it goes for Harrit, but Harrit chests it down. And it's back to Feyenoord. And they're going to try and play it forward. Timber to Stengs. Ivanusec goes out wide. And Gertrude plays the ball over straight into the arms of Lopez. Now, less than a minute and a half. We should be all right. We're in injury time. Just run the clock down. And now, Feyenoord get another attack. I'm holding my breath. The stadium is silent. It's gone through. That's offside, ref. Offside. He scored, but it's going to be disallowed. He was well offside. VAR should intervene here and disallow the goal. They're checking. What? What? 
he's given the goal. He was offside, ref. Ref, he's offside. How? How is that given? We've been robbed. It's 2-2 and we are out of the Champions League. I'm not quite sure how or why that was given. My only assumption is that they believed that he was behind the ball when it was played. But you can clearly see. Look, here's a screenshot. You can clearly see he's offside. We've been robbed. Absolutely robbed. And we are out of the Champions League. Thanks to VAR. Oh! So, VAR robbed us of a place in the Champions League knockout stages. And now we would have to settle for a place in the Europa League. Where we were drawn in the playoff round against Brighton. We will now take on Brighton for a place in the last 16 of the Europa League. And see if we can go as far as we possibly can in that competition. We bounce back by taking out our frustrations on Clermont Foot in the league. 3-0 up inside the first half an hour with goals from Kondogbia, Aubameyang and Klaus. But then we kind of sat back and allowed the game just to fizzle out. 3-0 winners. One more game to go until the winter break. And we can regroup and lick our wounds as long as we stay in with a chance of winning the title. So it was a trip to Montpellier for the game before the winter break and Vitinha got us off to a fantastic start with a great finish from the edge of the area. 27 and a half minutes played and it was a fantastic finish. The throw in from Renan Lodi. You see Vitinha's run coming away from his defender and getting the ball on the edge of the box and smashing one home. A couple of minutes later, this happened. Aubameyang over the top to Ndiaye. Ndiaye was shoved down. It did look like the ball was going out of play already. But the referee ran over to the monitor. He had put his finger to his ear and he had asked VAR what to do. They sent him over to the monitor. He checked. It took a while. There was a little bit of a gap. And then he comes back on and points to the penalty spot. It's a penalty. Aubameyang steps up. One-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper from the spot. Makes no mistake. The keeper pretty much rooted to the spot. And it's 2-0 Marseille. And we're keeping ourselves in with a chance of challenging PSG for the title. You see, the keeper didn't really even move. And then just before half-time, Cross comes in, it's headed out. Klaus gets the ball, shoots. Sacco turns it into his own net. And it's 3-0. Mamadou Sacco holds his head in shame. You see, it was, a, it was a good bit of play. Harrit put a nice ball into the box. Sacco done well to head it clear. Klaus coming in, turns it round. And Sacco can't do anything, can't get out of the way. And it's 3-0. But Montpellier weren't going to lay down and die. And they started the second half off brilliantly with Altamari turning, shooting and scoring past Paolo Lopez and putting it 3-1. And then Altamari again on the left. Plays it back to Leroy. Leroy. I think he shoots and a fantastic save from Paolo Lopez meant that we remained in the lead. As PSG went 3-0 up at home to Metz to guarantee that they would go into the winter break. As league leaders, Vitinha tackles Likogiannis to keep us 3-1 up. And then with 80, 83 minutes played, a header goes against the crossbar and the woodwork keeps us in the lead. And then all we had to do was play the clock down, just Passed the ball about. We had a two-goal lead with 30-something seconds left. We were guaranteed to finish up this game as winners. To be honest, it wasn't the greatest second half. Aubameyang could have got a fourth, but his header went over. But we managed to hold on for the victory. Montpellier won, Marseille three in the last game before the winter break. 
and it left the league table looking like this. As you can see, PSG remained top, 40 points from 17 games, won 13, drawn one, lost three, scored 42 goals, conceded 11. We are in second place with 39 points and a goal difference of plus 22. Then Monaco are level on points with us in third place with the same goal difference but less goals scored. Nice are back in fourth on 28 points. It's a free horse race for the title as we go into the winter break. So we are still firmly in the hunt for the French title. We start our French League Cup adventure in the beginning of January when we're back after the winter break. And we are in the Europa League. And although it's going to be tough, there are some really good sides in that. We're not going to give up. We're going to try and do our best and reach as far as we possibly can. In terms of our title race, we need to strengthen. And luckily... The board have injected a little bit of cash into the side. We haven't got the greatest transfer budget, but there is a little bit of money that we might be able to bring in a couple of really talented players and try and strengthen, give us a little bit more depth and hopefully have a better second half of the season than we have first and leapfrog PSG at the top of that French table. It's going to be tough, almost an impossible task because PSG are a very, very, very good side, extremely overpowered in many departments, but... We're not just going to give up. And one of the players who's going to help us to try and win the league is Valentin Barco, the 19-year-old Argentinian attacking left-back, wing-back, left midfielder. He can play as an attacking playmaker. He's extremely talented and only had a release clause of £7.2 million. So it's a bargain. He's going to improve us. He's got the world at his feet. I'm surprised he's not a wonder kid, to be fair. Um, in real life, Man City have looked at him and stuff like that. So I'm surprised he's not a wonder kid. But hopefully he's going to do very, very well for us. He joins tomorrow in game on the 1st of January. And hopefully will make his debut in the League Cup game. I've made a few notes. I've started a few scouting missions. And we are looking at bringing in a couple of extra players to our squad there are a couple that may go out the door as well, um, but transfers are for next episode though, because for now we're just going to enjoy our winter break knowing that we're still in the hunt for the French title. Right, that's a wrap for part four of my Marseille FM24 early access release slash beta save. It's been a little bit up and down the first half of the season. We've won games that we should have possibly drawn or lost. We've lost games we should have won. We've drawn games we should have won. We've drawn games we should have lost. It's... There's been drama, there's been highs, there's been lows, there's been VAR, there's been last gasp winners, and there's been, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been emotional, shall we say. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. It all helps me out. It helps the channel to grow. I'm seeing a little bit of growth, a steady, steady growth, and I'm hoping that it can continue going in the right direction and I'll get more viewers, more likes, more comments, more subscribers. And yeah, by the end of this cycle, we would have grown to where I want to be. Which hopefully will one day be monetization. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Until next time, bye bye for now.